Hello everyone, welcome back to a new Jitbag Compose video. And before anything, we just entered 2025, so I wish you a happy and successful new year. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the fragments inside Jitbag Compose, which means that you can call your fragment just like a composable function. So we're gonna see how that works. And before we get started, you need to add this dependency for fragments with Compose and make sure to apply it inside the greater build file. Then we can get started and firstly, let's create a fragment, choose a fragment, let's create a blank fragment and I'm gonna call this home fragment. Now let's remove the initial setup from Android Studio. We are not gonna need that. This is our fragment and this is the layout file for our fragment. As you could see, it has a text view that says hello blank fragment. Now our job is to call this home fragment from the main activity. So in here, just as a composable function. We could simply do that with the Android fragment composable that help us to integrate fragments in a Compose UI. All we need to do is to create a new composable. Let's call this home screen. And let's delete this modifier. And now we use the Android fragment composable, which comes from the library that we have added. And here you pass the home fragment. Just like that, that's all you need to do to convert this fragment into a composable. Now we can call that composable inside here. We can say home fragment or home screen, that's what we called it. Let's launch the app to preview that. We got an exception and I already know that we're gonna get that. The reason is because we need to convert this component activity into a fragment activity. We use fragment activity when we have fragments inside our activity. So this fragment activity will manage these fragments and manage uh, their life cycle. Now, if you launch the app again, we should be able to see the home fragment. And there you go, the hello blank fragment text of you is visible right there. It's behind the test bar because we are enabling edge to edge. Now let's get back to the Android fragment composable and let's see what we can do in here. Firstly, we can apply a modifier. So we can just say modifier equals modifier. We can apply any modifier you want in here. Um, let's apply this test bars padding modifier. So we can actually see this hello blank fragment under the test bar. And as you can see, that worked. Let's see what we can also do with this Android Fragment Composable. We can pass a fragment state and this fragment state is important to understand because it's responsible for saving the state of your fragment. So if you have local variables in your fragment, uh, this fragment state is responsible for saving uh, that local variables across recompositions. And to make you understand that, let's actually take an example. Let's say here you have, um, firstly, let's Let's remove this and let's add some extra space. And let's say you have a Boolean here that is called show error. I'll just add static value here. Let's make that true. In here, you check if the show error is true, then you basically wanna maybe show an error screen. And if it's not, you show your fragment. Now let's say this show error starts with a true, then we will be inside this as a block. And the state of this Android fragment would be created within the else block. And once we exit the else block, so when we uh, switch this boolean to false, we will execute the the if block, which means that the the fragment will be disposed or removed from the compose tree, and the state will be gone even if we switch this back to true. And to resolve this, we need to initiate the fragment state before the if statement. So we could say fragment state. Remember fragment state, uh, this one here, and then we pass that fragment state. Now, now this fragment state is saved from recompositions. So if we switch this show error to false and switch it back to true, we would still have the state of our fragment and that won't be affected by that recomposition. Okay, now let me delete this and let's actually see what we can also do with this Android fragment, uh, we can pass default arguments or initial arguments. Let's say in this home screen, you get a username or so that you want to display in your, in your home fragment. So you could pass it in here, username. Then you want to pass it to the fragment and you could do that with a bundle. So we override the arguments parameter. Then we can say bundle of, and this bundle takes a key and value for the key. I will initialize it in the fragment inside a companion object. I'll call this argument username. 
I'll give that username as a key and we can now pass this key and the value is username um, the key is our username just like that and now we want to fetch that username inside our fragment we can simply do that let's actually create a variable here called username and then here we initialize that username equals require arguments dot get string and we pass this key uh, get string if that's true then we could just throw an exception like that now let's just show this username in the UI I'm gonna go to the layout file and I will add an ID for this text view I'll call this TV and let's get back to our fragment inside the only view created let's get a reference of that text view so we can say find view by ID and the type is text view then we pass the ID and we want to change the text to hello username now from the main activity let's pass a username I'll pass a static one just like my channel land of coding and let's preview that let's see if we could just display that username in our fragment and as you could see hello land of coding that's how you pass arguments to your fragment using this android fragment composable there is one more property for this android fragment which is very important uh, which is called an update so this gives you an instance of the fragment and now you can access everything inside that fragment this could be very useful if you have a callback inside your fragment and you want to propagate that to the to the home screen or to the main activity let's simulate that Firstly, let's go to the layout file and let's just add a button, drag and drop this, then go back to the fragment and let's set a click listener on that button. So find view by ID, that type is a button and the ID should be button yes, set on a click listener and let's say whenever we click on that button, we want to navigate to the profile screen. Uh, for that, we could have a callback here. And simplest way to create a callback is using a lambda function. Let's do that. We call this navigate to profile screen. And I'll make this nullable like that. And we can invoke that lambda function inside the click listener. Like that. Now to get that callback from the Android fragment, here we already have the fragment instance, so we can say fragment dot navigate to profile screen and let's create another parameter which is a lambda function here called navigate to profile screen, just the same name. And we can make this equals to this one here. Now from the main activity, we can get a callback on that. Here you would typically have enough controller where you want to navigate to another screen. But in our case, I will just print something in the look at. So test navigate to profile. Now let's click on the button. As you can see, we printed that in the look at. And that was everything I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, a very cool composable in my opinion that could help you in integrating your fragments with Jetpack Compose. This could be really helpful if you have like a compose navigation setup and you have a fragment and you want to integrate that fragment inside your compose navigation you could just use this uh, composable and wrap your fragment with that composable so this is the end of the video thank you so much for watching i wish you have a great day and catch you in the next video